Hey, so I'm all decked out in my Aloha shirt today because I am going to talk about Manoa chocolate, which is located on the in the town of Kailua on the island of Oahu in Hawaii. Um, you may have heard of Kailua before. It is where President Obama and his family used to vacation when they went to Hawaii. Uh, so Manoa was started by Dylan, Dylan Butterbaugh in 2010, 2011. Um, Dylan was born and raised in Kailua. And there may be a couple other people that were involved in the founding of that as well, we'll get to. Um, Dylan was born and raised in Kailua. Uh, he is a local, used to go on surf trips with his dad to places like Nicaragua or Costa Rica and Indonesia. Um, Indonesia is actually where he was first introduced or first noticed cacao when he was 19 years old. So after high school, he went and on a backpacking trip through Europe and then he lived in Chile for five months while attending the University Vina del Mar, learning, um, having a double major, Spanish and sustainability. From there, he came back to Oahu to study at the University of Hawaii, the Manoa campus. And there he became friends with Dan O'Doherty. And you may have heard that name before because he's in the cocoa cacao world as well. So Dan was actually studying cacao's potential to be a commercial crop in Hawaii. And in case you don't know, Hawaii is now the only state that grows cacao commercially. So there are trees that will grow in Florida and I've heard of someone growing a tree in California. But the only place that grows them commercially right now in the United States is Hawaii. And they're actually outside of that, you always hear the 2020 zone. Well, Oahu and Kauai are outside. They're like 21, 22 degrees, just a bit outside of that 2020 zone. So um, Dan and uh, Dylan were both on the UH Manoa campus and um, Dan was studying cacao. Dylan was invited to go to the UH Cacao Lab and do some stuff like cracking pods, setting up micro ferments, making one to two kilo batches of chocolate. Um, so they really kind of learned, Dan and Dylan learned the tree to bar process together. So Dan went on to get his master's in botany, obviously focusing on cacao. And now he runs a company, an agricultural and scientific consulting company called um, Cacao Services. And he consults with a lot of cacao farmers all over the world. He's pretty famous for that. Dylan went on to start Manoa Chocolate. I believe early on there was someone else, Drew Farwell also involved, but I don't think he is anymore. Um, I could be wrong there. So Dylan started it in his parents' kitchen while he was still a student at UH. They debuted their product in 2011 at Hawaii's first annual cacao festival at the Dole Cannery in Honolulu. Um, he then went on to get loans for equipment and loans to rent a space for a micro battery, a little 600 square foot space in Kailua, right above um, Cinnamons, which is kind of a famous breakfast place in Kailua. Uh, they were, for a little while, they were pretty famous for having a Dora bicycle as part of their chocolate equipment. So they had this little Dora bicycle with training wheels that they would sit and spin and it was part of their cracking winnowing process that they would ride these little things and they would show that on tours. Now they've just recently opened in 2019, they opened a new factory just down the street, still in Kailua, um, that does tours, has a drink lab, a tasting station. It's pretty fancy. It's fun to go in there and uh, check things out. Um, what else do I want to tell you about Manoa? Oh, so his initial mission, like I mentioned, he had a double major in Spanish and sustainability. So his, his initial mission when he started the chocolate company was to plant trees. 
but now they're kind of the leader in encouraging growth in the Hawaiian cacao industry and they're helping a lot of, a lot of other cacao farms um, produce chocolate uh, from their trees. So I know that they're the, I guess the parent company, the grass shack company, uh, they also produce chocolate for Lydgate Farms, um, 21 Degrees Estate. So they're also helping other cacao farmers on the island. They are committed to sourcing local cacao, local Hawaiian cow, and they incorporate the Hawaiian culture into the company's vision and sustainability. Um, so let's see, what else do I want to tell you about Manoa? I think that's it. Let's flip the camera around and we'll open one of their bars. I think today I'm going to open, I don't have one of their Hawaiian cacao bars because I gobbled it all up last, from last time I went to visit. So I think I'm going to open this one, the Hawaiian sea salt, 70% cacao. So we'll flip the camera around and we will do that. All right. So, um, if you happen to go to their factory and you buy enough chocolate, like I did, you get this fancy little box that they have. So I've got my chocolate inside this box. But first, I wanted to talk about the name Manoa itself. Manoa is a Hawaiian word. There's a Hawaiian word, ho'o manoa, which means to thicken, which could be taken as like taking loose cacao and thickening it to chocolate. Um, Manoa, as a name, also means solid or vast or depth, which you could also apply to their chocolate. Uh, UH Manoa is where Dylan and Dan met, the University of Hawaii, the Manoa campus. And Manoa is a valley and a neighborhood on the island of Oahu. So this, the name Manoa is very Hawaiian. Um, these other designs along the outside. So they really wanted to incorporate Hawaiian culture into these designs without being really cheesy. If you've ever been to Hawaii, you know you can find some really um, cheesy Hawaiian souvenirs, but they wanted to incorporate it without um, that cheesy level. They wanted it to be tasteful, and I think they've accomplished that. They got these, these are called um, tapa, tapas designs. Um, they are traditional to, uh, there's a paper that's made from a coconut, um, the remnant of the coconut leaves on the tree, they pound it out and make it thin and they'll paint on it. And these are some of the designs on that. Okay, so on the inside of the box here, they have um, where they get some of their cacao from. So they get it from, um, like I mentioned, Lydgate Farms on Kauai. Then on Oahu, they have the Waialua, estate, Lonohana estate, Mililani Mauka, uh, the Kahalu'u region, which is on just outside of Kaneohe, Maui, they have the Kuai estate, and then they get some chocolate from the Big Island as well in the Hilo and Kona region. So Hilo and Kona are on opposite side of the islands. So like I said, Hawaii is the only state where they grow, commercially grow cacao. So I have a couple bars from them. Still, I have this World Blend, uh, Tanzania from Cocoa Camille, um, a vegan coconut milk, which is yummy. And this is the one I'm going to try, but I also have, they do, like I said, their Grass Shack Industries um, produces bars for other people. The um, 21 Degrees Estate just outside of Kaneohe, so I have three bars from them from different harvests that were produced at Manoa. But today I want to open the Hawaiian sea salt. Uh, okay, so let's talk about the wrappers. So we have the tapas design on the outside. These are the cacao beans. We talked about Manoa. Um, Hawaiian sea salt. I don't know what kind of Hawaiian sea salt they use. I do have another Hawaiian sea salt that I just wanted to show you that sometimes the Hawaiian sea salt has a red to it, uh, which is interesting, but I don't know which one they're using um, in this bar. So made in Hawaii, their factory is in Hawaii. Let's look on the back. So they have the grass 
the typical Hawaiian um, dwellings on the front and the beautiful Hawaiian mountains. Here is the bag. Let's look at the ingredients. So cacao is the first ingredient, organic sugar, organic cocoa butter, and sea salt. So although they're not certified organic, they do use organic ingredients. Um, that's what they say, say here. A substantial percentage of cacao worldwide is organic by default, where the farmers do not use pesticides and fertilizers. All right, let's open it up. Okay, so we have this package is biodegradable. Bean to bar from Kailua. Um, let's see what else we have on here. They give you pairings if you'd like to pair with it. Um, and they talk a little bit about Hawaii. So, yes, Hawaii is one of, if not the most isolated, one of the most isolated places on earth, for sure. All right. So I actually remember going to visit Dylan's little factory above Cinnamon's. I think it was in, I can't exactly remember. It was either 2012 or 2013, early on. And I remember going to their factory and having a tasting. And uh, I honestly was not impressed. <laughs> New maker, just learning how to do it. Um, I found it a little bitter, a little astringent, but he has had this time and he's really perfected the, um, the bars. And I often use his 70% Hawaiian bar in my tastings when I do it because it really has some lovely flavor. They have a breakfast bar that's very popular. They have a bar with rum that's very popular. So he has really, really improved his chocolate making skills over time. Um, so here's the bar. It's a good looking bar. Just a little, this one I actually brought back from Hawaii. So it's been through my suitcase and the airlines. So it's a little bit scuffed up, but it still looks nice. Look at it, it's got a nice shine on it. Flip it over and you can see the sea salt sparkling in the back. Let's snap it and hear, see if we can hear the snap. Oh, that's a good snap, a good solid snap. He's got a good temper on that. You can tell from the snap and you can tell from the shine on the bar. Okay, so I'm going to just warm it up a little bit with my thumb by rubbing it. When you melt the Cocoa butter has a uh, melting point that is close to body temperature. And so when I warm it up, it will release some of the aromas. I'll see what I can smell and then we'll give it a taste. Okay, so they used to make this bar with Vietnamese beans. I'm not sure what they're making it with now. I can guess, but I don't wanna say for sure. Um, the salt comes from Molokai which is another island in the Hawaiian chains. Um, when I smell this, I get a little bit of a coconut smell, a little bit of acid or maybe citric acid, a lemony. When I pop it in my mouth, it has a really nice mouth feel as it dissolves. So depending on which side you put in your mouth, either the you put the salty side down on your tongue or this side down on your tongue, you'll get a different flavor right away. So obviously if you put the salty side down, you get the salt, but on the other, the other flavors, as it melts, it has a nice earthy kind of herbal component that develops into a coconut um, and then um, cream. And it's quite a nice bar with the salt in there that with the salt complements everything. It's got a nice finish. It's not for me very hardly bitter at all just a tiny bit of bitterness in the finish no astringent astringency so it's a really nice bar to taste i really i'm a big fan of salt, salt and chocolate together so this is a nice bar for manoa all right we'll flip the camera around and finish up okay so that is manoa chocolate um, if you don't follow these guys on instagram you should they do 
they have great posts. They do something called Craft Chocolate TV, which is awesome for chocolate aficionados who just wanna learn about craft chocolate and also sometimes for chocolate makers. They are very transparent about their process and everything that they do. And that's one of the great things that Dylan does for the craft chocolate industry. They also, just this month, they have a monthly subscription and I was so jealous <laughs> this month because they were releasing three Hawaiian flavors. They were releasing Lily Koi, which is passion fruit, the Hawaiian word for passion fruit, Maya, which is banana, and Haupia, which is coconut. I would have loved to get my hands on some of those. But I would recommend, um, I mean, they have a lot, a lot of fun bars to taste right now. Uh, they are always experimenting with new flavors and I really like how he participates in growing, Dylan participates in growing the industry and um, his transparency in helping other chocolate makers get into or improve their chocolate making process. So that's Manoa Chocolate, a little visit to the Hawaiian Islands. Um, next time, I think we'll head back over to Europe and do a uh, new niche, newish, <laughs> kind of new, not really though. Um, European maker. And if you like these videos and uh, you want to continue to learn more about craft chocolate makers, please make sure to like this video and to subscribe. Thanks. See you then.